Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, um, someone who has dementia is um, a form of dementia is going to feel very uncomfortable in situations and environments that aren't comfortable for them, going outside their comfort zone. So let's move on to irreversible and reversible dementia or disease process. Now the things that are irreversible dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and you asked about other dementia. Vascular dementia is the next most common to Alzheimer's. Vascular dementia being that there's been a stroke, it's lack of blood flow to the brain, can be related to heart disease. That's a vascular dementia. These dementias, these are diseases that need to be diagnosed, okay? Once you've got the diagnosis of one of these disease processes, then you know whether or not it is treatable or not treatable. Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease starts out as a neurological disorder that affects our mus muscles and our ability to function physically. But in the latter part of the disease process of Parkinson's, you will see dementia symptoms. Lewy body dement dementia is another form of, of uh, dementia disease process that is more of a, um, you see more hallucinations and delusions with that type of dementia. And with Lewy body, you also see symptoms of what looks like Parkinson's. These doctors have a very difficult time differentiating all these disease processes. There's, there's also one that's called mixed dementia. Mixed dementia is someone who has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease plus symptoms of another kind of disease process. Frontotemporal lobe dementia, that is more of a dementia disease process that affects the frontal temporal lobe of the brain. What happens with those folks is that we see aphasia more prevalent, the speech is garbled, word finding difficulties. These folks with this disease process can become more <coughs> impulsive, a little obsessive compulsive. So we, working with folks with frontotemporal lobe dementia can be a little more challenging because we see a little more behaviors. Let's talk about um, the reversible forms that we see dementia symptoms, but if it's diagnosed and treated, those dementia symptoms may go away. A brain tumor can cause dementia symptoms. If anybody's heard of NPH, normal pressure hydrocephalus, that is fluid on the brain. That is something that is often misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's disease. And when a doctor, if they catch it, some will have surgery, a shunt put in, they remove the fluid in the brain, and there the symptoms disappear. An infection, we hear a lot of times someone with a, an infection like a urinary tract infection, they start displaying symptoms of dementia. Well, if the urinary tract infection is treated, we see those symptoms disappear. Vitamin de deficiency, we see folks with B12 deficiency, vitamin D, um, depression. That's huge. Everybody needs to pay attention to depression. Why? Because it's very high prevalence in our senior population. Depression is very prevalent and most untreated. So what can happen with depression? Someone with an untreated depression can look as though they have dementia. They come up with all these symptoms of memory loss and personality changes and the family may suspect dementia when it's actually an untreated depression. Medication side effects, we need to look at that. 
How many medications is this person taking and what might be the side effects that may be causing some confusion? So those are the things reversible and irreversible dementia. Why is it important to get a diagnosis? One, we want to know is it treatable or not treatable? If it's not treatable and we get a diagnosis, that is going to open the windows to get you the right doctors, the right treatment plan, the right supports in place. Um, you can plan for your future. A lot of people don't want to know if they're going to get Alzheimer's. A lot of people don't want to know if they have that diagnosis. But it helps to empower the person and the family to plan for their future. Um, and it also helps you to get involved in research. And I'm going to explain that with the Alzheimer's Association. So the Alzheimer's Association has many chapters, the main chapter being in Massachusetts in Watertown. They cover Massachusetts and New Hampshire. These are the services that are provided to the public and community free of charge, okay? Care consultation. They will, they will meet with you and the family. They will provide all the advice, either over the phone or in person. Education. If you visit their website, you will find more information that you, you could all find on the website. Education, trainings that are available for free to the public. Um, multicultural outreach, they do a lot of that with folks who don't speak English, they do outreach in the community. Medic alert, safe return. Six out of 10 folks, the Alzheimer's Association states that six out of 10 folks will wander with Alzheimer's disease. In my experience working with Alzheimer's, I say it's closer to eight out of 10. And a lot of people think that their loved one won't, and it happens. Medic Alert and Safe Return are the programs in, that are offered through the Alzheimer's Association that will allow you to register your person, have a bracelet. They do have other programs out there such as um, Safety Net with LoJack. They have GPS tracking systems, but it's very important to just understand that with someone with Alzheimer's, that may eventually happen. Jim. Yes. Amen. Okay. For both. Or this. Okay. Support groups, public policy, advocacy, and research. If you go on the Alzheimer's Association website, you will find trial matches. They are looking, that is the biggest thing they're looking for, is folks to come in that are healthy to help them do more research. Um, Metro West Alzheimer's Partnership, Arthur touched upon that, is a big group of folks professionals and caregivers. We're always looking for caregivers to get involved. We provide programs um, for folks for, in the educational programs in the community. Um, the meetings are held the first Tuesday of each month. And you can contact um, Anne for more information on that. Pleasantries, in a nutshell. It is a social model, home-based day program. I take care of folks eight eight to ten folks a day, Monday through Friday, in the earlier stages of Alzheimer's. Socialization has been a proven benefit with Alzheimer's, which slows the disease process down. The, the number one thing that happens with folks with Alzheimer's is that they isolate and withdraw. And the caregiver and the person with Alzheimer's live in their home and shut out the rest of the world. This is going to help break that barrier. So you can see a few. We do a lot of guest-directed um, activity throughout the day and um, family dining, a very accepting and forgiving environment. Again, higher functioning, early to middle stage folks with Alzheimer's. And that's my information. Thank you. That was terrific. And, and Tammy. Tammy's totally devoted to this and really believes in, in and that's the reason why she started doing pleasantries. Um, for folks who've got early, in the early stages of Alzheimer's, the easiest thing for folks to do is to withdraw, especially if you're the spouse and you've got somebody with Alzheimer's and you don't want your spouse to be embarrassed, right? So now, not only are you not going to the store anymore and you're not going to the Dunkin' Donuts anymore, but you, know, you almost don't want to see your kids because you, know, you don't want to let your kids know that dad's got problems or the mom's got problems, right? 
The greatest thing you can do for the person with Alzheimer's in early stages of Alzheimer's is to get, is to get socialization, to get folks close. I used to really believe, and I know Tammy was just going through the, kind of the, 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 the symptoms of, the, of the Alzheimer's, and there's a cluster which is clearly cognitively related, that inability to do the memory issues, the judgment issues, there's a whole cluster of things. Then there are these others that you inevitably associate with Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, anger, apathy, these terrible things which I have not become convinced are, are all things that you can deal with, that you can deal with, because most of those are simply reactions by the person who has Alzheimer's, who has these cognitive problems, to the fact that they have cognitive problems, and they're really depressed about it, or they're really <laughs> angry about it, and they get very upset. So, but having folks, first of all, learning yourselves, if you're the caregiver, how to deal with a lot of those issues, and then putting those folks in an environment, which is this kind of positive environment, where, where they're with other people who have got the disease, right, is actually a really beneficial thing. So, if, as a bottom line, if you, if you, you, you ought to go see this place. You ought to go see Pleasant Trees. It's in Marlboro. There are other social day models like that in the area, so you want to look at those. They make a lot of sense. You also want to know about Bay Path Elder Services. Bay Path Elder Services, how many folks, raise your hand if you've heard of Bay Path Elder Services. Oh, that's great. See, we're speaking to the choir. By the way, I, I'm, I'm always, I always have these presentations taped, and this will probably be on Framingham Cable, and we also upload them to my YouTube channel, because the people that it's most important know about some of these things are the th people who aren't here, the people who aren't involved. 